Okay, my friends, so by now you have watched 12 tutorials and have explored the individual characteristic profiles of the devious dozen archetypes. And therefore, you have gained the awareness of how these different traits can affect your life. In this video, I will now present to you the resolution game. The resolution game is a comprehensive strategy that guides you on how to become more self-knowledgeable on how the devious dozen archetypes resonate with your life on a personal level and how to process, overcome and resolve their negative aspects. And before I do go into the resolution game, there are two subjects that I want to discuss with you. The first subject is what I call the blight of self-doubt. What does it actually mean to be with self-doubt and how does self-doubt have a negative impact on your life? Well, so far you've learned that roughly 95% of human psychology exists within the unconscious realm, that you are unconscious of 95% of who you are and how you behave. You've learned that people are a lot more unknowing of themselves than they actually think. And to be unknowing of thyself is to be unaware of one's own characteristic traits. So let me pose this question. If I'm roughly 95% unaware of who I am, how can I be sure, certain and confident of who I am? The short answer to that question is, I can't. Even if I act sure, certain and confident, without truly knowing myself, I'm putting on an act. I'm falsely projecting myself. I'm wearing a mask of bravado. Now let's consider the devious dozen. Having familiarized yourself with their archetypal profiles, you'll see that they are conflicting and problematic traits that not only exist beyond your awareness, they are mindsets that can riddle you with self-doubt and anxiety, making it difficult to near impossible for you to function optimally and with single-minded determination and confidence. They are the reason that you are more doubtful about the decisions that you make in certain aspects of your life. That's because your mind is confused with different traits that have different drives and desires and different perspectives that think differently. To highlight the detrimental impact of self-doubt and the subsequent anxiety that follows, I will now give you an extreme but symbolic illustration of what it means to be so unknowing of thyself that you just can't function with integrity and certainty. Imagine for a moment there is a crazed serial killer that's on the loose where you live and this killer is hacking up victims on a daily basis. The killings are splashed all over the front page headlines and the entire community is on lockdown. Because you are unknowing of where and when the killer will strike next, you're doubtful and fearful to a point that you can't think beyond the next day or even the next moment, perhaps. You are hypervigilant, uncertain and terrified of what you don't know about this killer. And in this state of fearful doubt, you're paralysed into a state of not being able to function properly. Having fearful doubt is the ultimate self-sabotage and the number one killer of personal growth. Whenever we are in fearful doubt of the unknown, we suffer with a mental block that says, I can never be or do this. And then we shrink away from that aspect of our life. We sabotage ourselves by retracting back from and not going after the type of experiences that we truly desire and need. Fear and doubt are two sides of the same coin. We become fearful of the things we doubt and we are doubtful of the things that we fear. The coin itself has been stamped on the alloy of uncertainty. 
When faced with uncertainty over the something, someone or somehow, we are apprehensive and unsure about its quality, performance and outcome. The same applies to our own psychology. When unknowing of who we are, we lack the certainty and integrity of our own character and lack conviction in our own worth and ability to perform. That self-doubt will then seek its sense of power, identity, security and certainty within relationships, possessions and experiences, latching onto whatever and whomever will provide you with that sense of this is who I am, assuredness that we crave. And whenever that external value that we need to feel validated is either not present or not performing as desired, the sense of certainty and confidence is soon lost and the insecurities of self-doubt then resurface. That's because the self-doubt is always there. The self-doubt was being temporarily pacified by the external value. When self-doubt has reached epic proportions, we can be overcautious, sceptic, hesitant, indecisive and defensive with our behaviour, which makes it difficult to cultivate a sustainable, trustworthy and loyal relationship with the different aspects of life, where the conflicted psychology will struggle to piece together and maintain lifestyle stability. In simpler words, uncertainty within will manifest as inconsistency without. So, why is the self-doubt always there? Why does almost everyone experience self-doubt? And that even includes people who are successful in life. It is the invincible ego with its false pride that keeps the self-doubt intact. How? The ego is incapable of vulnerability and honesty. For the ego to expose its inferiorities, let's say, would be a fate worse than death. And thus, the ego will camouflage its powerlessness with evasive and defensive behaviours. Where one does all they can to avoid dealing with the truths about oneself and reality itself. The truths being the flaws, the insecurities and the fears. So, to eradicate self-doubt and cultivate a wholesome sense of self, one must truly discover who they are by exploring that unknown 95% of the underlying psychology. You must explore your unknown psychology. For to truly know thyself, one must become self-knowledgeable. And self-knowledgeable means to understand the actual causations and patterns of one's characteristic traits. Self-knowledge equals the confidence and conviction of this is who I am. When I know who I am, I am certain of what I am and what I am not. I know where I am unworthy and worthy. I know where I need to make improvements in which to securitize my potential in the different areas of my life. And from this knowingness, comes the confidence and conviction to progress with mindful action. So, being self-knowledgeable affords the insightful wisdom of knowing our positive and negative attributes, and thus, where to make self-improvements that adjust our behaviour towards the type of life that we truly desire. To claim these qualities, we must embark on the greatest mission to face the bogeyman of truth that lurks within. We must become the noble and righteous slayer that walks into the darkest caverns of self to confront those inner demons, to resolve the villainous and victimhood aspects of self and to emerge from that rite of passage to claim victory over the self. Because the victor is the ideal example of self and the leading example for everyone else. Which brings us to the next topic, working on the inside job.
So to make self-improvements that lead to lifestyle upgrades, it is imperative that you first resolve the problematic traits of the devious dozen so that they no longer hinder you with self-abusive and self-sabotaging behaviours. Then repurpose those archetypal traits towards positive outcomes that become beneficial assets in your life. Up until now, the devious dozen have been controlling you because they've thrived in your self-unawareness. Self-unawareness equals lack of self-control because that to which you are unaware of about the self, you cannot control about the self. Whilst the devious dozen traits do have carte blanche over your mind, you will continue to be the autonomous passenger of their directives, the reactive slave that is in lieu of their habitual rules. That's because the behavioural patterns of each characteristic trait are triggered by stimulus response. When triggered externally, there is a certain person, place, possession or predicament that activates a specific trait. When triggered internally, there is a typical memory, thought, emotion or feeling that activates this part of you. Both internal and external triggers are interrelated. For example, a certain person could say a buzzword that makes you recall a key memory that triggers a particular trait. Alternatively, you could experience a key memory that triggers a particular trait that makes you react a certain way towards that person. To overcome the devious dozen self-sabotaging and self-abusive traits, you need to interrupt their stimulus responses. You must become aware of the behavioural patterns to establish the why, the what, the when and the how they are triggering you. Knowing the actual cause and effect of why you do what you do gives you the insightful wisdom, these points of experiential reference and these predictive powers to know how and when to break habitual patterns and assert positive change. So rather than continue being the reactive slave of your characteristic traits, you will instead transform into being the directive master of them. Your personal transformation work begins with the inside job. You must go within to assess the innermost regions of the unconscious aspect of your mind. The inside job requires you to start exploring and assessing your psychology. You must drill into the bedrock of your mind's archaeology and work at the foundation levels of self in order to discover and remove the detrimental weaknesses, for you cannot build a solid and sustainable temple from unstable foundations. The inside job, however, is one of the least anticipated, because nobody relishes the prospect of facing the honest and uncomfortable truths about the self. Not everybody is ready to acknowledge that which has been unbearable or unacceptable to know. Questioning one's existence is scary. Everything comes under question, so there must be a, a genuine desire to want to know the answers. But the answers can be equally as disturbing as not knowing. The answers expose the ugly truths. The answers leave no excuses. The answers demand that you take action into the great unknown. Going within to deal with the unresolved parts of self is often referred to as doing the shadow work. You stop dancing with the shadows of self and instead shine a light on them. You become the hunter with a torch and spear walking into the cave of your mind to expose the parts of you that have been dodged and ducked for so long. And in doing so, with equal measure, you will be frightened by the horrors whilst exhilarated by the self-revelations, the eureka of, aha, that's why that keeps happening to me. It must also be said that neither will the actual transformation work itself be easy. 
We all want to emerge as the stunning butterfly, and yet we know that entering into the cocoon is something that will be constrictive, painstaking, and inescapable. The cocoon is, however, non-negotiable. For personal growth to happen, we must surrender to the cocoon of transformation. We must undergo the dying pains of shedding the habitual self so that we can be reborn as someone more elegant and effective. We must voluntarily walk into the cocoon to undergo the healing process of resolution. Confronting the whole truth about self does bring forth the healing. The healing process is to open up the flesh, expose the wounds, extract and purge from that which is stagnant, redundant and limiting. This requires you to immerse within the cacophony of your psychology and expose yourself to its warts and all. Taking off that goddamn masquerade of the outward persona so that you can look deep within to ask, who exactly am I? What is my true nature? Why am I here? And what do I truly want for myself and by undergoing the inside job you are choosing to swallow the red pill you are choosing to unplug yourself from the unconscious programs of your mind matrix and awaken to the absolute truth about self so be prepared because what you find may at first be hard to digest once you unveil the absolute truths about self there will be no more going back to the comforts of self-deception and self-denial. But the choice is simple. Either you continue to live a lie, having never really lived, or awaken to the immeasurable powers of your true nature. You can go to work on the inside job and undergo the transformation process by playing the resolution game. And before I get into that, I want to share with you the meaning of that symbol at the beginning of the presentation. You should recognize that as the yin and yang symbol, this ancient symbol that represents balance and harmony, where both the dark and light, the negative and positive, are proportionately unified into a whole. Because when the dark and light are working together in this tight and powerful coalition, you become more powerful than when they are separate and divided within you. And bringing the dark into the light is what we want to achieve with the resolution game. We want to raise the darkness of the 12 archetypal traits into our conscious awareness and then to integrate both the dark and light traits so that we become one powerful and unified source of energy. So I have designed the resolution game for you to achieve exactly that. The resolution game is a psychotherapeutic strategy that will guide you through the process of resolving from the detrimental traits of the devious dozen. The ultimate aim of the resolution game is to decompartmentalize your different traits resolve from their inferiorities, sabotaging and abusive habits, become more self-knowledgeable and self-aware, and thus take self-control over the direction of your life, where you are the fully integrated and actualized person that has raised your every mast from bow to stern, moving through life as a coherent force of life-affirming consciousness. That said, I wouldn't deceive you with a Cinderella story. I need to pinprick any delusions you have surrounding the idea of being a redeemed character. By no means will you come out of the resolution process as this squeaky clean archetypal hero with a chiseled smile. That's just pure double fantasy. You will, however, Emerge as the balanced individual that has reformed with both your dark and light characteristic traits and in perfect harmony. Where every contrasted part of you has been pulled together and assimilated 
as one. You will transition from having a mind that has been at odds with itself to having a coalition of opposed traits that have come to terms with each other, whereby the whole package of you is played together like the ebony and ivory keys of piano, a delightful and fluid melody of minors and majors. The beauty of the resolution game is its therapeutic power. You will decompress from that dark and heavy psychological baggage that has been weighing down your potential for years, decades even. You will release from that toxic energy of that internal bad karma. You will create ample space within to sanctify the mind body with goodness and virtue. You will upgrade the unconscious operating software with better mind games that elicit positive lifestyle results. And therefore, I solicit you with this idealistic reprieve. If applied earnestly and correctly, the resolution game you are about to master, along with the other forthcoming mind games in this program, will instill you with qualities of the atonement mind. Atonement is to establish mental stability from instability, balance from imbalance, unity from disunity, self-confidence from self-doubt. The atonement mind is the optimal state of consciousness, to be at one within the self, where the mind operates at dynamic levels of lucid power. With atonement there is serenity, more not less. Serenity not being just a nice little happy place that you go to. Serenity is the unique ability to remain composed and calm and balanced, even when confronted with that which is crazy, which means you are not reactive, upset, fearful or doubtful even in face of that which tests the nerve, that you err on the side of grace and dignity, even when confronted with the undignified and disgraceful. With the atonement mind, you will always maintain a state of equilibrium and equanimity in all kinds of weather. Having redeemed your soul and beautified the mind, to feel peaceful within and peaceful without. The resolution game is played out by processing your mind through the following five key stages. The first stage is the self-exploration. The first part of any personal transformation is to understand what it is that you are transforming from. It is in this first stage of the resolution game that you will explore the characteristic traits of the devious dozen as they relate to your life. Through the process of decompartmentalization, you will explore, uncover and assess the unresolved issues and behavioral patterns of each archetype to inner stand exactly how they affect you. From the self-exploration exercise, you will get a comprehensive and precise breakdown of their personal attributes. The examination process is a mindfulness practice that will drastically increase your self-knowledge and self-awareness, providing you with greater connection with the deeper intelligence of your intuitive nature. You will develop a coherent, comprehensible and constructive inner dialogue and relationship with the self, where your conscience, knowing the difference between wrong and right action, will grow with more diligence and accuracy, which in effect will raise the standards of how you behave to get more of what you truly desire more of the time. The second stage of the resolution game is where you will identify a problematic character. During this second stage, you will be identifying with other problematic characteristic traits that are having a detrimental impact on your life and preventing you from making progress. 
And you will be surprised at how many different ways that a negative label and narrative that you've identified with is holding you back. The third stage of the resolution game is where you will be mastering the knack. The knack is a psychological reconditioning technique where you will use the motivational forces of pain and pleasure to reverse associate, which means to rewire your mind to move away from detrimental traits and habits and towards the type of outcomes that you truly need and desire. The fourth stage of the resolution game is called the redirection. Here, you will devise the exact plans and procedures that will interrupt your habitual patterns and then redirect your behavior, which then leads you on to the fifth stage, which is called the absolution. Here in this fifth stage, you will make peace with the negative aspects of the archetypes and transmute them into beneficial assets of your overall character, raising your state of consciousness to a higher state of positivity and virtue. So to summarize, the resolution game with its five-stage process of uncovering, processing and resolving the unconscious and detrimental aspects of your mind is so that you are no longer self-sabotaging nor self-abusive with behavior. And once you've figured out all of the different patterns and agendas of the different archetypes, their little mind games will be up. You will be liberated from their destructive patterns and elevated by their constructive desires. The self-knowledge and self-awareness that you gain from playing the resolution game will make you a fully realized being with the enormous potential to supercharge your life towards a future of greater promise. And to end this tutorial, I want to talk to you about a subject called flex and reflex modes. That's because the different mind game exercises that you are about to undertake in this program will elicit a psychological transformation that occurs for a process known as neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is where the power of the mind reshapes physical matter. This means that what you think creates physiological change within the body. You rearrange the organic structure, chemistry and pathology of who you are through the mind. The mind over matter transformation takes shape in the learning and application process of the different mind games that you are about to play. During these different mind games, the learning process, your mind will be operating in two modes, flex mode and reflex mode. The flex mode is the contemplation of new information. When flexing the mind, we have engaged with the manual pilot to practice and download new information into the unconscious aspect. The flex mode is recording mode. The reflex mode, however, is the usual thought processing operandi. The involuntary, non-deliberate and effortless thoughts, the mental programs that already exist within the autopilot of the unconscious aspect. Reflex mode is the recorded mode playing back. Between flex mode and reflex mode, there is a period of recalibration where your mind is making comparisons between the new information that's being taken in and what is already known. During this recalibration, we can sometimes be confused, confused with opposing thoughts to the point that our perception on a particular subject longer makes sense. I want you to embrace this confusion point as it heralds the arrival of a profound realization. Realizations always arrive just after a point or process of being fused. Profound realizations are psychological breakthroughs. We are breaking through the old mental programs to realize a new way of perceiving reality. With each 
breakthrough realization, a new you will come through. This new you could be an emotional shift from depression to joy. This new you could be a revised approach on how to tackle a key element of your life. This new you could be uh, the revelation of a skill or talent. This new you could be a radical viewpoint that sends you on a different pathway that changes your life forever. And profound realizations, they do often occur during moments of reflection. Reflection is part of the transformation work. It is important for you to take time to reflect upon what you've learned in comparison to what you already know. And from that reflection, you will be gifted with a profound realization where you emerge as someone more resolute, refined, and wiser. And look, do not feel intimidated if the exercises are difficult to begin with, nor be doubtful over your ability to implement them the right way. Instead, be confident in your own style of application. Tackle each stage of the resolution game in one digestible chunk at a time, continuing at a pace of progress that is comfortable for you. And realize that psychological changes are most demanding at the foundational level. Breaking into the heavily set structure of a reinforced identity does require one to pound away with the cognitive chisel. You simply cannot acquire self-knowledge without earnest contemplation. You simply cannot obtain results without dedicated process. Dedicated process is just like learning how to play a musical instrument. You begin with the scale of finger exercises, then gradually advance towards the mastery of playing a finished piece with joyful easement and refinement. Likewise, the mind gain exercises in this program are structured so that you gradually become more sophisticated with the psychotherapeutic skills and mind control strategies. Dedicated practice, however, does require discipline. It takes discipline to not get sidetracked by those entertaining distractions and gluttonous pleasures. It takes discipline to do the laborious work that's necessary to enhance one's mentality. It takes discipline to undergo the initial pains of transformation. Rest assured, what does perhaps at first rupture you with the arduous symptoms of repetition will at last rapture you with the symphony of mental wealth. Let the profound breakthrough realizations that you experience be the encouragement that keeps you going. Let the self-respect that you garner from the accomplishment of each exercise be the motivation that fuels your appetite. Let the sheer scope of self-awareness that you glean from these mind game exercises be the foundations that support mental wealth. And you are about to start on the foundations of your mental wealth with the first stage of the resolution game. The first stage is the self-exploration exercise. And I will see you there.